What is up everybody and welcome to today's video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Zach. This is SC Fish Keeping. I appreciate you stopping by. Please hit that subscribe button down below if you have not already. Now, today's video is kind of a crazy story. That's crazy. It's honestly something that I have never considered could happen. It's something that uh, I feel I have to share so that if you guys are ever in a similar situation, you at least have this on your mind. And uh, I think I have a one of a kind turtle. Let me tell you what happened. So right here is my comment snapping turtle tank. The last time you guys saw that tank, I was uh, getting two little baby comment snapping turtles from my buddy, BJ, who uh, needed to rehome them. So I got the two baby comment snapping turtles, I put them in there, and uh, this is how I set up the tank. So here's the tank now, and it's a little different. You can tell I set it up a little bit different, and uh, there's one of the little baby snapping turtles, the, the tiny guy, I had to completely rearrange the way this tank was set up for uh, one very good reason, and it's that this guy's buddy escaped and dried out. The story has a bit of a surprise twist at the end, so definitely make sure you stick around to hear the end of that. First though, I want to give those of you that saw my community tab update from the other day an update on this tank. If you didn't see it, this is what I said. I talked about how I was dealing with some uh, sort of sickness. It was like a fungal issue that was starting to affect multiple tanks and I decided I really needed to buckle down, focus on the fish first, and so I haven't uploaded a YouTube video in about two weeks. This tank was the primary concern for me. This is my peacock bass tank. It has my albino arowana, an ompot catfish, a bicher, some silver dollars, and some other kind of little odds and ends. But the albino arowana was the one that was the most sick and the one that I was the most concerned about. Uh, I don't normally like to show sick or suffering fish, but I'm gonna show you a quick clip of that guy, just because you can tell he's swimming around doing just fine now. So he didn't die, so I feel comfortable showing you this, just so you can see how close he was to the end. So here's the clip. So as you can tell, he was really, really close to the end. And while he's not still, he's not perfect, I mean, his fins are a little nipped up and those little kind of feelers on the front of his mouth uh, are, are still gone. But uh, he's definitely better off than he was. The rest of the tank, I never noticed any issues with any other fish. I mean, none of the peacock bass had any problems. The little uh, Ompok catfish down there, he was doing well. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's what happened. And if anyone's curious about the uh, medicine that I used, I used this stuff that I found at Petco that was recommended to me by a friend. I'm not sure if this is the right stuff and I'm not saying like use this to treat all your issues, but I'm just saying that's what uh, worked for me. As you can tell, he's already eating too. So uh, he's, as far as I know, in the clear. I still have a couple more days of the treatment that I'm gonna do and keep the temperature high until those fins really start to grow back. But uh, I thought I was gonna lose him. And here he is. So yeah, I'm uh, obviously super happy to report that he is doing great and I really appreciate each one of you that uh, left a comment on that community tab post saying take your time, we understand. Sometimes, you know, with YouTube, you just really gotta set that aside and focus on the fish and so I'm glad I was able to do that with the support of, of you guys. But happy to report that I'm back and you're probably like, Zach, stop rambling. What happened to that dang turtle? Well. I want, I want to show you, I want to show you so bad, but unfortunately I didn't have like a camera set up 24 seven. I was actually out of town for one night. And of course it's the one night that I'm out of town that he gets out. But uh, I still, I actually managed to uh, hire someone to put together like a really, really awesome reenactment of this. So, uh, you know, it costs a lot of money and a lot of time and effort, but uh, I think it's gonna be worth it. So let me show you a reenactment of what I think happened to my snapping turtle. Hopefully that painted the picture well enough, but just in case, let me kind of reiterate. So this log was going up and I had it sitting on top of that filter. So it was sitting just below the rim of the tank. I only had about 
three inches of water here. So I did not have that much water in there. So only a part of that log was covered. So this guy, this guy climbed his way up that branch, got onto that filter, which then let him get onto the side of the tank and he fell behind. From there, he crawled from this tank behind the TV, behind the 125, behind my rack of 40s and ended up there's that tank, which is my ball python cage. He ended up behind that. So way over, way over, way over, way over here. And this is where I found him underneath like a little one of these things that my kids have. Right there. So yeah, I don't know if you can really get a feel, but that's probably like 25, 30 feet. Maybe it's 10, I don't, I'm bad at distances. Um, but he was behind this tank here and unfortunately he was very very dried out when I picked him up um, He didn't move and his eyes were shut and I mean Here's another picture and you can tell just how dried out he was Let me back up for one second after I noticed he wasn't in the tank because like I said I was out of town and then when I get back I always check on everything I was so confused as to why there was only one snapping turtle in this tank that I tore every rock every branch every pebble out of there and was digging through the fine layer of sand trying to find this turtle. I even woke up my wife in the middle of the night and said, hey, come look in this tank and tell me I'm not just missing this turtle. And you know, she helped me find him and then we found him and, and like I said, he was dried out in the corner. So I picked him up. Unfortunately, he did not move. His eyes were still shut and I figured there was no way that someone could look like this and still survive. Well, surprise, surprise. After holding him for a little bit, his little eyes opened up. And then I realized he was still alive. He was just very, very dry. So I took the little guy, you know, this little guy, and I ran back over here. Speed, I know. And I set him back in the water very gently. I put him on a rock that was, I like put a rock in there, put him on top of it so he was still uh, able to kind of acclimate himself into the water. But it did not take long. As soon as he got in there, he just swam off the rock and then was just instantly better. I mean, he was fine. So there's a the little guy just cruising around doing his thing. And the big one is hanging out right back there. Hiding out in that little corner, making it hard for me to film him. So now you can probably understand why I needed to uh, rearrange this tank. I made sure that the log was fully submerged underneath the water. I made sure that there was nothing that would make it so they could get, I mean, they could still probably get on top of the filter if they wanted, but that's a pretty big gap for a little turtle to climb vertically. Um, I mean, clearly he did some Ninja Turtle stuff. But they're great. He's eating and everything. Let me show you. Just a little piece of tilapia. There you go. That is the story of how my snapping turtle escaped. Consider it a PSA. If you have turtles and apparently make a ramp that's like really steep and not as wide as their shell and you think that they can't get out, they're going to find a way. And maybe it's just my own ignorance for not doing enough research on snapping turtles, but nothing out there that I saw said they are a real life ninja turtle capable of climbing. Who knew? Raise your hand if you knew. Before we wrap this video up, I wanted to say just a couple quick things. Uh, thank you again for letting me take those two weeks off to really focus on my fish. I think it's very important that no matter what anybody does, if they're doing it on YouTube, remember to keep the hobby first. And that's what I needed to do. I needed to dedicate as much of my time as I had for my fish to this. But I'm happy to be back and filming again, making more videos. Um, I have a lot of updates to do. You guys have never seen this tank. Um, I have another tank that I ordered some fish in that you guys have never seen. I've made some changes as far as stocking and stuff goes. So a lot of big stuff coming. Musky update is coming soon. I know everybody wants to know where is the musky and I promise it's a story worth telling. So stick around for that. 
And uh, we got a filter to build. I need to convert all of my outdoor filters to be internal so that the ponds don't freeze here in the beautiful state of Nebraska because it's like 30 degrees today. So lots of good stuff coming. Subscribe if you have not already. Let me know what you guys thought of today's video. Um, did any of you ever think that that snapping turtle would be able to escape? Have any of you ever had snapping turtles that can climb? I mean, I'm curious. Share your stories down below. But uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As always, uh, it's been so long. As always, remember that this is Zach with SC Fish Keeping, reminding you that every fish is a keeper. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. See you.